Okay, okay, we can get started. Welcome to the June 12, 2023 meeting of the Town of Niski Unit Planning Board and Zoning Commission. Mr. Henry, would you please call the roll? Mr. Laflamme. Here. Mr. Screbutanis. Here. Mr. Kahn. Here. Mr. McPartland. Here. Mr. Darpino. Here. Ms. Gold. Present. Ms. Strang. Here. Mr. Drescher. Here. Consent. Chairman Walsh. Here. Thank you, Mr. Henry. Uh, okay, so we have no um, uh, minutes ready for tonight. So we'll take care of that action on the minutes from the last meeting at our next meeting. There are no public hearings, so we'll move right to the privilege of the floor. So anyone wishing to be heard regarding any planning and zoning matters in the town of Niskayuna, please come to the microphone, state your name and address for the record, and we'll gladly listen to what you have to say. I'm Doug McFadden. I live at 1388 Row Road in Niskayuna. I'm, I'm here to talk about the uh, two home development that uh, Fred Polsonelli is proposing. I guess I wanted to make a couple comments. That's going to be a long I want, first, I want to acknowledge Clark Henry for helping us fathom a lot of technical stuff. I'm not a civil engineer, but uh, he, uh, he's been very helpful in, in getting information to us. I've got a concern that this project appears to be moving quite quickly. That is that you're going to approve it maybe tonight. And I guess I'm wondering what the urgency is. Time is money, yet, even I know that, but... I'm just I'm concerned about it. And I guess the other thing is, it seems like that you don't have the final site off from the, technic, the uh, town designated engineer. And there's still back and forth going between uh, him and Mr. Mm -hmm. Steenberg. So I guess I, knowing that there's still this tennis game going on, I'm kind of curious as to what's going on. Why, why do we need to move this, this so quickly? Maybe I misinterpreted. Maybe you aren't going to do anything tonight, but uh, that's what, that's where I'm coming from. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Privilege of the floor. Hmm? Yeah, just come on up if you want to speak. Uh, planning and zoning, any matters? Um, okay. um, my name is Mary Rose. I live in this unit on Rutherford Road. Um, thank you for all you do. I've never been here before. Um, I, I'm going to apologize ahead of time in case I feel upset, but, um, what's happened is, uh, on Ruffner Road, there's a home, long story short, the house was sold about a year ago. There weren't many people when pe the people that owned the home came by, I would bring them bubbles or try to welcome the kids. And I noticed they were gone again. I think Gloria might have spoken to about it. Yeah. Um, so what I, what happened was about six weeks ago, I noticed all different cars pulling it out of the driveway. Um, on Ruffner, the homes are very close to each other. And also, I just want you to know I'm bringing this up because it's affected my life. Um, but I also care about the people that bought the house. So I'm here really just to find out what the rules are and, you know, your thoughts on it. Um, so I've lived in this community 25 years. I've lived in this house almost 20 years. Um, my husband's a physician in the area. I have helped, you know, just with the community. We pay taxes. I help with the PTO, Iroquois, Rosendale, uh, the high school. I was the deputy for uh, COVID-19 um, during um, the COVID. So, like, we've done a lot for the community. We love the community. So I noticed cars coming and going. So the first weekend I thought, oh, okay, and there's like six cars on the road. The next weekend I noticed another set of cars. So I'm like, what's going on? So my husband and I were like, maybe we should take pictures. What's because I'm a little concerned about my own safety because I don't know who the people are. Um, and then the next weekend, I'm sitting with some friends. Mind you, the garage windows were painted, so at night, the light would go on, and it looked like, I didn't, honestly, I didn't know if traffic was going on. I didn't know what was going on. Um, so I'm sitting with my neighbors. I'm like, do you know what's going on over there? They're like, oh, that's an Airbnb house. So uh, I saw the owner, a very nice couple. I said, what's going on? I see all these cars coming and going. You know, they're partying a little outside, not tremendously, but I mean, people are entitled to have beers or whatever. But it's the thing is, I don't know who they are. I don't know who the cars are. They're coming and going. And she said, yeah, we're renting it. So my first question, I guess, to the town is, these are short-term rentals. So in the last six weekends, I've had five different sets of people coming and going. I don't know who they are. Uh, I put up some cameras this weekend. 
I inquired about putting trees up because I am concerned. Um, you know, my husband has to deal with me on the weekend. I'm like, oh, Virgo people are here again. And it's upsetting because, you know, 25 years in a community and then the couple bought the house. I don't know their reasoning, but, you know, maybe they have a right to do what they're doing, but it's changed my life. Um, you know, little things, you know, cars on the street, garbage cans. But, you know, the girl is trying. The owners are trying to keep it nice. So I'm not here to belittle anybody. I just think these short term rentals are affecting me directly enough that I may consider the move. Um, you know, I thought Niskuna, I moved to Niskuna to be in a residential area, not to live next to a hotel. Um, you know, when people travel, they'll call the, the, you know, the hotels or the tourist agents and they'll say, Airbnbs are changing our communities. Um, I wrote a few things here. I mean, first of all, me, it's my own uneasiness, not knowing who's next door, not knowing why they're there, not knowing what they're doing, not knowing if they're supposed to be gone. Um, it can also lower the values in the area. You know, I, so from what I understand, this is not the first time this came up to the town, I think. So you probably know more than me because I'm not a lawyer. Um, but, you know, I just like to know, you know, is this, is this the way the community is going? I mean, she's from California. Can you just buy a house in this Guiona, in this Guiona and just make it a commercial property? I mean, are we allowed to do that? And yeah. if so I, I, um, just one, I'm sorry, Mr. Walsh, one last thing. It's across the street from a bus stop for children. They, they never notified any of us that they were doing this. And I don't have little children anymore, but I have a concern for little children waiting on a bus stop. You don't, I mean, most people are good, but you know, if you have people coming in every week and that's different, eventually someone's not gonna be so good. Okay, sorry, yes. No, I was just gonna say that usually we don't respond and get into discussions during privilege of the oh, floor. Okay. So what we'll do is we take your information. I'm sure that we can talk about it later on in this meeting, either during oh, reports okay. or commissions and business. Okay. Okay, Laura can uh, give us an update on uh, any rules and regulations. And, and we have had discussions regarding Airbnb and we can talk about that later on, okay? Okay, do I do anything else and to help? Uh, not right now, or... just, uh, uh, you know, you can listen. If you have to go, this will be obviously- no, I can sit. Okay, and awesome. it'll be it's recorded and it's available on YouTube also as meetings. So if you have any concerns, you can always reach out to the planning department and work with Laura. Okay, or, or Mr. Henry. Okay, thank you. Okay, privilege of the floor is still open. Anybody else? Good afternoon. My name is Norman Schilling. I live at 1400 Rattle Road. I'm going to follow up on uh, Doug McFadden, my neighbor's comments. In looking through the TDE's report, there are approximately seven or eight still open items. And in reading uh, the documentation that came in preparation for this uh, meeting, it said that, well, the town board's gonna say if uh, provided that uh, all the requirements of the TDE are fulfilled. Well, you could have said that right at the beginning before we even started all this discussion. And I think it's also, uh, important that uh, we have documentation and that neighbors are able to see the final resolution before the uh, planning board approves to move forward with this project. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Privilege of the floor. Okay, see no one else here. Laura, do we have anybody online that would like to speak tonight? I know Ms. Postcode asked for the link, but I'm not sure she wants to speak. Juliana, did you want to speak? Thank you for asking. I'm all set. Okay. okay. Thank you. And then I also received an email, which I forwarded to you guys. The writer intended to be here tonight, but let me know very, very shortly that she was unable to come. Um, I know I'm not really reading emails into the record, so I'm just going to just summarize really quickly just because I don't think that you guys would have a chance to read it. Um, but essentially, they just had some concerns about the Polsonelli property. They live on Angelina Drive, and their home is the only one on Angelina Drive with a steep hill going down from the Polsonelli property to their house. They spent a lot of money last year um, installing a 70-foot-long water collection French drain through the lower area of the backyard. Um, but even with no development, their backyard remains too wet to mow until late spring. So they're just very concerned about water moving from the Postinelli property down that steep hill to their property. 
and they are asking for a swale or a deep trench to be dug along the property line that aligns with um, their prop well aligns with the property line to keep uh, to keep any of the drainage away from their land. Just to summarize, so they've invested thousands of dollars to remediate the current drainage problem. They have a unique steep hill, and they are requesting a swale to be dug. Deborah Malik and Elliot Mazer. Mazer. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, Laura? That's all I have. Okay. Hearing or seeing no one uh, else to speak during privilege of the floor, we'll close privilege of the floor. Uh, next on the agenda, we have a planning department presentation regarding average density development process. Mr. Henry, are you doing that today? Sure. Thank you, Chairman Walsh. Laura and I just wanted to give a quick update on the, the presentation we made several months ago about the process that an average density development subdivision follows according to the town of Niskayuna code. And just to refresh everyone's memory, there are basically two parallel branches of a, an ADD project. There's a special use permit, and then there's the basic seeker determination or the overall plan of the subdivision. Um, the special use permit um, must be reviewed and approved by the, the town board. And if you see under item one, that's the path that, that a um, sketch plan would follow. And that has been followed all the way through item F. The, the planning board had a public hearing, um, notifications were mailed out, and ultimately the planning board made a recommendation to the town board regarding the special use permit. So that special use permit is now at the point where the town board would have to take action on it. However, that is essentially placed on hold until the seeker determination the state environmental quality review is complete on the project. The, the CAC made a recommendation to the town board and they recommended that the town board make a positive seeker determination. And by, by saying positive, they recommended that the project would have a negative impact on the environment. So the next step in that process now is that the town board has to review that and, and the town basically creates a scoping document and findings. And, and those two documents re, kind of refine the areas of the project that the, the town fields need to be investigated further in what's called an environmental impact study. So if the town board follows the recommendation of the CAC and chooses to make a positive seeker determination, that would require that an applicant prepare an environmental impact study, which is essentially another branch of this project. And Laura and I were going to go back to this document and update it to, to, to show that process, to add a little more detail. So we just wanted to get a little word out to people who are interested in an average density development project and add a little more detail to what would happen to the project with a positive seeker determination. So sorry, Laura, if I can can you fill any details of anything I may have left out there? No, I think that's perfect. Okay. 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 Thank you, Chairman Walsh. No, thank you, Mr. Henry. Appreciate that. And uh, yes, thank you. All right. Um, that's it for the presentation. And under new business, we do have one resolution tonight that will, if the board wants to, we'll go forward with. And that's resolution 2023 16. That's a resolution for approval a plot, plot plan for a two lot minor subdivision and lot line adjustment at Antonio Park, Pulsinelli Drive. Uh, the resolution is, was posted to the web, but I typically read the conditions and they're quite extensive as they usually are with the uh, subdivisions. 
and I plan on reading those into the record if everybody can bear with me for a moment, okay? Resolve that this planning board and zoning commission does hereby grant minor subdivision approval for a two lot subdivision of tax map parcel 40.1-54.11 as shown on the aforementioned, a five page drawing set by Brett Steinberg, PE, PLLC, subject to the following conditions. One, the declaration of intention regarding future construction activity on lot four of the four lot subdivision referenced in this unit planning board resolution 2020-15 is attached to this minor subdivision approval and included as a condition herein, as amended to include applicant and owners who are des designated by the town attorney. Two, prior to recording the plat, a final letter of approval shall be received from the town designated engineer regarding all engineering and drainage aspects of the site plan. Three, prior to recording the plat, any engineering, sewer connection, and drainage concerns will be addressed to the satisfaction of the town superintendent of water, sewer, and engineering. Four, prior to recording the plat, the aforementioned subdivision drawing shall be revised to include a note stating that no further subdivision of lots one or two are allowed. No further subdivision deed restrictions for lot one and two shall be provided to the planning department for review and approval. The deed restrictions shall be filed jointly with the subdivision plat. Five, as noted under the heading future subdivision note of the aforementioned site plan drawings, any future subdivision of the unrestricted lands of the amended lot four, the lot line adjustment, will require a major subdivision review as required under town dispute and a subdivision law at that time. Six, prior to recording the plot, any minor textual changes of the, to the subdivision map will be addressed to the satisfaction of the town planning department. Seven, prior to recording the plot, a tree plan shall be submitted to and approved by the Niskian Tree Council. The planning board requests that as many trees as possible, including unmarked trees and understory, be preserved during the building permit and construction process so that the forested nature of the land is maintained. Eight, prior to issuing a building permit, the new houses shall be referred to and reviewed by the Architectural Review Board. Nine, prior to issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall participate in a pre-construction meeting with the town of Niskiuna, if so requested by the planning or building department. Ten, prior to site disturbance, the subdivision map shall be modified to reflect agreed upon decisions of the pre-construction meeting, if any, and distributed as required to the town and to all involved contractors. Final site plan shall be submitted to the town labeled for construction. 11, prior to the pre-construction meeting, any questions or concerns raised by the town designated engineer will be addressed by the applicant in a formal letter to the town. 12, prior to final certification of occupancy for either of the two new homes, the applicant shall sign a stormwater control facility maintenance agreement and access agreement in order to ensure the proposed stormwater facilities are installed and maintained per plans. 13, in accordance with chapter 180 of the Soil Erosion and Sediment Control Ordinance of the town of Niskuna, the applicant shall put in place soil erosion and sediment control measures sufficient to stabilize disturbed areas. These measures shall be satisfactory to the superintendent of water, soil, and engineering and shall remain in place until such time as natural vegetation has been successfully established. 14, wetland boundaries shall be recorded and shown on any plot plan of a building lot containing wetlands. Wetlands may not be disturbed, drained, or physically altered in any way without first contacting the Army Corps of Engineers. Additionally, the town of this unit requires that no land can, can be disturbed within a 25-foot buffer from the boundary of the wetland. 15, should the garage for elevations, elevation for an individual lots deviate by more than six inches from the elevations approved for construction by the planning board and zoning commission or the building department, then revised grading plan shall be submitted immediately to town engineering office for the review and approval. 16, the limits of clearing on this subdivision shall be strictly adhered to during construction. To the maximum extent practical, the applicant shall retain as many of the site's healthy trees and natural vegetation as possible. Driveway shall be installed with least possible disturbance to trees. And finally, number 17, the portion of land to be annexed to Lisi Development Company LLC shall be conveyed in such a manner that the portion is combined with six St. Gerard Lane, lots four lands normal, now or formerly of Lisi Development Company LLC immediately and shall at no time be considered a freestanding parcel per Niski and a code. Ms. Gold, do I have a motion? I so move. Uh, motion is moved for adoption. Do I have a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. And seconded by Mr. Scrabby Tennis. And uh, maybe I could have the applicant come forward. Uh, and I know we have uh, your engineer, is Mr. Steenberg's online, correct? I thought, was he online, Mr. Steenberg, regarding yes, this project? Yes. Yeah. So in case the board has any questions or anything, uh, you had an opportunity to take a look at the conditions. Do uh, you have any comments or concerns at all? No, I saw a draft of them and I'm, I'm fine. All right. Most, you know, there's some concern, you know, from the public tonight. But I tell you that uh, I've been doing this a long time, and, and most of the conditions uh, in this uh, subdivision approval are typical conditions uh, that need to be closed out. 
Um, some of the exceptions might be here is, uh, you know, the concerns about the uh, lot to be annexed, uh, you know, uh, moved over to the leasey uh, development and uh, making sure that that follows uh, the previous approvals of a prior resolution that we had approving his subdivision. So there's a, you know, a few things in here um, uh, that are aimed toward that, making sure that that happens correctly and everything and address any concerns. Um, so there's some extra conditions that we normally don't see that are um, related to this uh, project itself. Uh, but as far as the town designated engineer, I, I mean, I took a look at the, uh, uh, the latest uh, letter from town designated engineer. Um, I didn't see any showstoppers that, you know, that, uh, that I've seen in the past at all. It seemed like they're all doable. Um, and that's why I want to see if Mr. Steenberg or you would like to, um, you have any concerns with any of the open items that were put forth by the town designated engineer at all. Yeah, this is uh, Brett Steenberg. I apologize for not being able to be in attendance uh, personally this evening. Um, I uh, I did look over the letter. I actually was on vacation last week, so I didn't get a chance to to um, uh, write a response to it and address the changes. But I did look over the letter, and there's no showstoppers there. Um, a lot of it's just asking for some additional information that we've already done that just needs to be included in reports, things like that. I know um, Matt did take a look at the uh, the sewer line out there today. Um, and there's, you know, we're able, we will be able to tie into the sewer line um, without uh, having to go to uh, New York State DEC for a sewer extension because the sewer line does extend 136 feet up Polsonelli Drive, um, where we show it extending to, um, and the, with, the, with the manhole there, and I did confirm with them that we would be able to make that connection without uh, having to actually have a formal permit by DEC. Um, so I think things are working through the process. There's nothing major in that letter. Um, and I appreciate the board taking the time um, to, to move forward with the resolution, hopefully this evening. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Steenberg. Do you have anything else, Mr. Paulson? No, I just wanted to, um, uh, you know, thank the board. Uh, it's been a, you know, a process that uh, I think we had pretty much everybody's involvement, uh, concerned parties. We've done our due diligence in trying to address them. And uh, in the end, we want two successful homeowners to enjoy their property and not to affect neighbors in a negative way. And I, I think we've accomplished that. Yep. And I appreciate the, the hard work uh, and the effort that you put forth, in any, especially in the engineering. I know there's concerns from the neighbors, but uh, um, quite, there's quite a bit here for, for a two lot you know, subdivision. A lot, a lot of work was done that I've seen. So thank you. And I will note that this process has been ongoing for many months at this point and that many of the conditions in the resolution cannot be met until after this approval is granted. Brett, just a couple of quick questions on the TD report and this uh, separating the gutter and the footer drain piping and also increasing the diameter to six inches. So it's an open TD question, so I know condition number uh, 11 will apply, but I know you just got back, but do you have any thoughts on that? Sorry, I lost my mute button there. Um, no, I actually, I did look at that. That's not an issue at all to separate those two out. It's actually probably a good idea not to introduce the roof drainage um, with the footing drainage, because if anything would ever block up, it could potentially impact the, the basement of the homes. Um, so we will separate those lines out and increase the size to six inches. Um, the, really not a, not a major issue. Okay. And I know this came in late, but the letter that Laura read from the resident that's actually downslope from the property, this concept of a, of a French drain, I mean. We we actually looked at this very early on, uh, Mr. Khan. The, um, the, we actually have a swell running around the outside of the house, and I believe uh, Mr. Cole even mentions it in one, either one of his correspondence with me or, or with the town um, regarding how we are draining the water, any of the water that's that's um, we're creating on the site and actually diverting some of the water that's going there now away from it into our storm drainage system, um, which essentially we're creating it, but without creating a blockage there. And the reason we can't create a blockage or dam there because once you create and channelize the water, if, I mean, we're not changing the, the flow patterns up there um, other than around the house area, obviously. And that water we're capturing and putting into our system 
but you know you you will always have that area which sheds there now which is actually much larger now which is being cut off a little bit that will shed to those lots once you channelize that and drain that you have to drain that to some location um i you know what, what we're proposing will not make their um situation um any worse and you know may even make it slightly better based upon our drainage calculations yeah, I quickly looked it over, and I think I agree with what you said, based on when we sought a letter from the resident and now, but I just wanted you to verbalize that for the record at least. Um, I think it should be same or maybe slightly better. Okay, thank you, Mr. Khan. Any other comments? Brett, could you just articulate, just, just for the public, what you think the, the, the single uh, most significant addition to the TDE letter is, just, just out loud, in your review? The single most, I, I didn't see any major additions in the TDE letter that I thought were big additions to the plan. They were all very minor. You know, probably the biggest thing is separating out the, the, the the roof drainage and footing drainage because you're you're separating those two you know you're putting in a second line there um, parallel to the other one but I didn't see much in the way of any major changes um, in significance in that letter uh, most of it was you know there were things like um, we did provide the end calculation or the end values for the 7.44 inch rainfall but we didn't include the hydrographs in the report because the stormwater management reports, I don't know if you've looked through it, it's, you know, that one, I don't know how, it was probably 200, 250 pages long. Adding more hydrographs makes it 300, 350 pages long. Um, it just things that, you know, the technical things that just, I, I just want to see the calculations and make sure, but most of the stuff was, you know, minor in nature, um, just getting the, the TDE to sign up, um, you know, with, with the location of or the the town engineer to sign off with the location of the manhole and the location of the um, the hydrant and and that stuff and that that stuff that will work uh, you know closely with that man make sure that they're okay with everything um, but I didn't see any major issues. Okay, any other questions comments? Okay, Mr. Henry, please call the roll. Mr. Laplan. Aye. Mr. Scributanis. Aye. Mr. Kahn. Aye. Mr. McPartland. Aye. Mr. Darpino. Aye. Ms. Gold. Aye. Chairman Walsh. Aye. The resolution is approved. Okay. We've still got some open items, but uh, you know, good luck, and uh, I know you'll take care of them. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, that's it for under new business. Uh, we have a couple items under discussion tonight. First one being 1222 Choice County Road. <coughs> this is an application for a site plan approval for a tenant change at a lot that is partially within uh, the town of Nuskiuna, actually predominantly in the town of Nuskiuna, or in town of county and partially within the town of Nuskiuna. And we have uh, represent applicant and representative of the applicant. Uh, if you don't mind, could you guys introduce yourself? Uh, and then you can just give us a summary of the project. Uh, we do have some paperwork, but it's great to hear it from you, okay? Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. You might want to pull the microphone up a little bit. There you go. Thank it's you. Better. Uh, my name is Jed Yaffe, uh, an attorney from the law firm of Lemery Greisler. I'm the attorneys for Capital Church. Uh, with me is lead pastor, uh, Dr. Jason Karen Patsovs. And uh, Capital Church currently is located in uh, the town of Colony. It's tucked away uh, on Bly Road off of uh, Central Avenue. And the church is under contract right now to purchase 1222 uh, Troy Schenectady Road. Uh, I don't know how familiar you are with this property. Uh, the contract consists of seven parcels, uh, four of which are located in the town of Colony. Three uh, are located in the town of Niskayuna. Uh, the building is mostly located in the town of Colony. The uh, actually, I, I think 7% of the building is located in the town of Niskayuna. So um, we are here uh, applying for a change of use. Uh, the building had been used as a law office. I believe the property in the town of Niskayuna is zoned 
for neighborhood commercial and house worship is not permitted. However, the portion of the building located in the town of Niskayuna uh, is proposed to be used uh, for two purposes, that that corner of the building would be used for uh, a food pantry. And I believe the church actually operates as a food pantry one night a week for about two hours. And then also currently has a program for before and after school, a day, uh, not a daycare, excuse me, a care program for uh, children. I think it's uh, school age children. Uh, but this church would like to expand that program, uh, expand the hours for uh, not just before and after school, but during the day. Uh, so the while it is uh, the building, the entire building is it is a church that would own the building. It operates the it would operate the uh, the sanctuary in the uh, portion of the building located in the town of Colony. Um, there could be spillover. But the um, again, that portion of the building located in the town of Niskayuna would be would be operated as uh, uh, child care and uh, food pantry. Um, we have uh, reached out to the town of Colony, and we have received uh, approval for a change of use uh, to be used as a house of worship as well as uh, daycare. And uh, we are here just. That is uh, seeking your approval. Is, is, is there any more action for the town of Colony? Is they have a resolution forthcoming or anything, or is it? Uh... Well, it is the the approval is for the change of use we have, and it would be conditioned on further um, site plan review. Site plan review and application for the building permit. Okay. The there would be no new improvements, no change to the footprint of the building. Uh, if this, you know, one step at a time, first, we would like, obviously, to know that we can use the property for the intended use. Um, then after that, we would like to look at what type of modifications would be necessary. Uh, the proposed change would be mostly cosmetic. There would be no structural changes to the building. Um, there, the building is, has been used as offices. There would the proposed changes would be um, laying carpet down. It would be removing and installing some walls, the office walls. Right now, from what I've seen and from discussing this with uh, members of the church, those are the only changes to the to the portion of the property that's located in the town of Niskayuna. Obviously, the other side of the building, it would be removing office walls to make room for the sanctuary. Great, thank you. Yeah, and we did receive. Uh, through the planning office so quite a bit of information we have the, the sketch you know the drawings of the changes for the uh, proposed construction you know the walls coming down so on and so forth and mr henry spent some time um, taking a look at uh, if it were allowed in the town miskiona or even the portion that is allowed the parking arrangement and it appears that uh, uh, the parking should be sufficient if it you know uh, based on the available parking that is already on the site uh, the only question I, I was thinking of is, uh, and it looks like there's no changes to access at all. I mean, you already got a curb cut. I believe it's Fly Road already, and there's no proposed changes there. It is what it is, right? Right. And, um, um, and within this unit, uh, daycare or uh, a food pantry or whatever, I mean, it seemed like the hours uh, were reasonable. Um, and we know that, uh, you know, traffic's been pretty heavy there probably in the morning. and. You know, probably four thirty ish to six somewhere in there. They got away quite a bit. It's but uh, um, obviously, uh, I don't. As far as uh, services, it probably weekends. I would assume anyway, right? So, um, so really, the question is for I think Laura or Mr. Henry. Do we usually like uh, just defer to, to, to town and county? Do we write a letter and ask them to keep us informed of any site changes? Um, we have and can do that. Um... We did that with the Lisi building, and it, um, they didn't take our concerns into account. So, um, but we do have the ability to do that. The other thing is I talked with Elena today. The daycare is just a permitted principal use site, site plan change for us to look at the daycare and then the food pantry because it's, it's less than, you know, 3% of the building can be considered an accessory use. So uh, I think that we also have the ability to just do a 
a regular kind of tenant change a resolution on this if we wanted to not defer to the town's colony. Okay. All right. And by the way, Mr. Diarpino, thank you, Dave. It's meant to say that as recusing himself uh, and Mr. Drescher as, a, as an alternate is taking his seat uh, for the record. Um, yeah, I don't know. I have a professional relationship with your architect. So you're, you're in good hands. All right. Um, uh, okay. So basically a change of tenant use. The only other question I guess I had was signage. I can't remember what's there. I have to drive by and take a look. They had a pretty good sign there. Like the yeah, electronic Joel's, sign. They also had an electronic sign too, yeah. Yeah, which is, you know, we discourage. And is that, is that staying, the sign that's there? I don't think that's going to stay, but that's a obviously. Yeah, maybe you could kind of think about that and yeah. let, let the planning office, what the intents for signage is. One of the things is, you know, we're, I guess, sensitive to signage, you know. Uh, we try to minimize electronic signs that constantly are changing, you know. The, the sign as it currently stands is one that shows date and time, and so it's not a, a full color LCD or LED screen. Um, that and then above that it has the the name of the, the building. Okay. The yeah, tenants. I just couldn't remember and get down here today. Yeah, so. and so um, our initial thought was since it's already paid for, it's already there. Change the name, uh, but keep the structure as is uh, would be, and same on the building. And all of this is on the the colony side. Right. Yes, yeah. uh, but change the the letters of the name that was there and then put our church logo. Uh, those were the initial ideas. Uh, since there's a, an entrance that would be primarily, that would be solely used for the food pantry, um, if permitted, and this would be uh, solely in the Nisca unit portion, is to be able to label that door for the food pantry so there'd be some outside, outdoor signage in the parking lot, but still outdoors. Okay. That's our, our at this point, plan. All right, and I can understand you, you utilizing the existing signage. And if it's not one of those ones that we're concerned about where it's, you know, constantly trash, you know, changing and different colors and explosions and all that kind of stuff. Cause it is the entranceway to Niskayuna still, even though it's in the town of Colony. So that's would be one of our concerns, I guess. All right. All right so um, uh, we need an, an, uh, additional information, Laura, from the applicant in order to um, do a tenant change. <coughs> do we have everything that we need? Um, I feel like Clark did a pretty thorough analysis on it. Um, I think we have everything we need for a tenant change. I mean, sometimes, <coughs> excuse me, I guess the only information really I didn't see in there, which maybe it was, um, is like number of children for the daycare, that type of thing we usually look at, um, mm -hmm. and hours of operation of the daycare. But it's a wide open site with a lot of parking, at least on our side. Yeah. It's probably. Yeah. I mean, if you have those numbers, it doesn't hurt to, you know, to provide them. Um, yeah. The, um. <clears throat> the hours of operation, I think, are listed in there, like the before care and the after care. And so right now, that's currently what we run. Um, and at our current site, we're licensed by the state to have up to 100 um, in our smaller footprint. Um, but we're anticipating right now for the summer, we have 40 enrolled and probably going forward for the school year, although we're licensed for 100. Really, my wife's the director of that, and she's looking to keep it right around 50. Uh, down the road, um, wanted to have that open door to expand from before care and after care. Should we open a, a daycare? Then those numbers would probably exceed 50, but certainly no more than 100. That's kind of what we're we're looking for. for that. Okay, so we could uh, we could have a resolution. Uh, our next meeting isn't until July 10th, so that's uh, it's a little yeah. bit of a way, a little bit away. So I think we could we could have a tentative resolution for that meeting if everybody's okay with that. You know, and uh, just the only thing I would suggest is maybe condition that, uh, uh, you know, if there's any, any open items that the planning department mm -hmm. needs, such as, you know, the number of children, it sounds like we, we got a number tonight, but, um, you know, concern with signage, just making sure if there's any sign changes, we're informed. So we at least get some input to that. Maybe we condition that and there's no change in uh, ingress, egress. So, you know, it's basically fly road. It is what it is, right? So. Yeah, just a, just a couple of questions. Do you, I mean, the latest hour of operation that you have here, and it's for the food pantry, is at 7.30 p.m. Does the church usage or daycare or food pantry just ever go later than that? Um, currently, our youth ministry meets on Friday nights, uh, and they go till 8.30. Um, on Tuesday nights, we have Naranon that goes from 7 to 8. Uh, as far as regularly scheduled uh, events, uh, that would be uh, all that we have on the calendar currently. 
Uh, as a church, there are small groups that you know occasionally meet or a fellowship or something of the sort. But as far as throughout the year, those are primarily the, the latest. During the summer, we'll have vacation Bible school. And so we'll have dozens of kids in the building. Uh, and that uh, we dismiss at 8 o'clock. Uh, leaders, you know, cleaning up and rolling out after. But we really don't have any uh, late, late activities. Okay. Just a couple of quick related things. And the the root of my question has to do a little bit with traffic flow. Yeah. In terms of the daycare program, you're, at your current location, I think you're serving the Colony School Districts. Correct. Do you plan on also serving the Niskuna School Districts? Uh, district? If, if Niskuna will bus, so primarily the, the students that arrive uh, for before care and after care are bused there. Um, currently, uh, the buses don't drive to 1222 Troy's Connected Road because there's no need to. Uh, if they were, uh, if the buses were willing to drop off there, then we would absolutely love to be able to serve both. So the colony schools right now, do they have a plan for bringing students on buses to the new location? Likewise, colony doesn't need to drive to 1222 Troy's Connected Road. So right now, there are no buses going there. We're in conversations to see if that would be a possibility. But right now, there are no buses that go to uh, to that building. Yeah. They go to our current building on 31 Vly Road, but there's none that go to 1222. And again, slightly related, again, but traffic flow and yeah. movement of people in and out, especially young children, but now moving away from young children. The food pantry, what's your form factor for that? Do people come, park, go into the building, come out, or is it something else? Correct. Yeah. So they, they come into the parking lot. So we would kind of keep similar to what we we're currently doing, but they come in and they, they bring into the cars come into the parking lot and they come inside. Uh, currently, we're able to bring, let two families come in at a time. With a larger footprint, our food pantry would go from approximately 800 square feet to about 13, 1400 square feet. And so we could have a few more families that would be able to come in. They come in and they have an opportunity to kind of basically shop for themselves, walking around. So cars in the parking lot as they're waiting for their turn to come into the building. And then a few families come in in a building at a time. Uh, they select their items and then they're able to go back out. Okay. Look, I, I don't think it's anything fundamentally different from Stewart's or the um, I forget who the other one is in the corner of um, you so know the Dollar, other, Dollar Tree. Or Dollar well, the other gas yeah. station, right? I mean, yeah. it's the same. They're open late. It's the same kind of flow in and out. But I think I'm going to strongly recommend that you do work out a traffic flow that can be accommodating buses in the future coming in at after school hours, right? Two, three, four. Yeah, especially with, you know, the way that intersection is set up. I, I mean, I, I know we have no authority over any approvals no. there no, on those that are side. Good, those, those are good comments because we've looked at other daycares where we've asked, what's the flow? You know, so, you know, you want the, obviously the children dropped off close to the door. And I, I, to be honest with you, I didn't look at the site plan with that in mind. Is, it, is the uh, uh, is the bus is able to get around? Is there enough room there? Is everything look like it's going to be okay for, for what you want to do? Uh, I've never driven a bus, but that parking lot in Escuyuna, the side is, is pretty large, and so I would anticipate that they'd be able to, to to circle around. And on the back side of the building, there are one, two, three, four, four entrances into the building. Just on the back side of, and then there's the, the of course, the, the main one on the, the front. Mm -hmm. So access for kids to get in and out of the building, as well as you know, drop off and pick up. And, and the nearest uh, residence, I believe, is south south of this property, mm -hmm. probably on Vly Road. Mm -hmm. Did uh, Town and County talk about, or will they be talking about any re residential concerns, or has anybody raised any concerns? Because it does seem like a more intense use over what was there, obviously. No, they haven't raised it. That's mm -hmm. actually, um, I think it was actually a light residential zone, and it's actually, it's permitted. Okay. Yeah, because obviously, you know, with the, the law offices, you know, the pretty quiet you know it seemed like it was pretty quiet well, yeah you know, and this is to be a little bit more intense use here yeah yeah so i think chairman walsh nailed it with the last comment right i mean you you are developing a what i would consider from what you said a more significant use that really needs to be taken into consideration especially on that vly road the southern vly road um, part of this property and access to the property all right so um. Going way back in time, wasn't it retail? Way back in time. Wasn't it dolls? Dolls. I'm sorry, what was it? It was, it was dolls. It was a woman's high-end clothing. Clothing store. Okay. 
And it, it was very definitely retail. So the law office has been lower traffic volumes than the retail it was, I believe. We have a few questions over here. Yeah. Did you want, do you want to go first? Oh, yeah, I'll just because I have a quick one. So what's the current like lighting situation? Is, you, you, is it? It should be. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah, I elbowed it once already. Um, what's the, the current lighting situation for the parking lot? And do you have any plans with changing that? Because you did mention that some of your things go to later in the night, 7, 7.30, I think you said. So what are your plans with lighting and overhead lighting? You're going to have to defer to hey. The, uh, there's another member of the board who's actually planning all of this right now. He's out of town and he's working with a contractor. So we're they're finalizing the plans. And now we're waiting for the final contract. And so I, I'm not in a position to discuss the lighting tonight. Um, I do know that they're working on the, all the plans. For the... That's something that it would be through the town of county for the site plan review process. Because obviously, you know, we, we want to keep the light on the property is always our goal right and, yeah. and not in, impact the uh, the one resident that's nearby by any lot spill spillage the best yeah. we can right which should be the goal no matter what town you're in right yeah so, so just to be clear all we are able to do here is make recommendations right no no, no you no. guys have site plan you guys do not have to defer um most of the parking is in the town of yeah. Eunice. so a lighting plan would oops probably affect us we would definitely, I think, want to ask for that lighting plan. But this is the line that goes right through the building. Mm -hmm. So, like, the majority of the parking that serves this parcel is here, but the majority of the building is in the town of Colony. This is probably the closest residence, but I believe that it comes with the parcel. Um, and then you have to sort of cross fly point drive then to get to the next that actually was part of, part of my question. I am uniquely familiar with this property because I was the stenographer when the prior tenant came in um, in the town of Colony to try to reconfigure the building and, and put an additional parking garage in the back, as a matter of fact. Um, and you're, my understanding, part of the problem was that uh, the traffic flow that I believe you're sharing with Vlipe Point, is that correct? Sorry? The, the, traffic flow behind the building um, where it says easement for ingress and egress is that is that being shared with Vly point um, I, I actually don't okay because I, I know it was exclusive to Vly point okay because I, I know that there were many upset residents coming in to, and it was a completely different develop a completely different proposal for that back uh, at that time but and i don't necessarily think that the neighbors would be alerted for a tenant change although if there's site plan there i don't know if we notify uh we don't usually for tenant change this parcel does not actually access onto Vly point road oh okay. um maybe that proposal was adding an access to Vly that point road i think the only parcels that access Vly point road are the condominiums and the doctor's office okay okay good good to hear that thank you and that kind of goes to my concern that you you're sure you have enough parking on site i don't remember the total number i know sometimes congregations for particular holidays need more parking and whatnot and I don't think the condominiums are going to let you park there. Well, well, Clark did the parking analysis using the the rules of thumb that we have, and I believe it um, it was adequate. The parking, so. I'm just curious about overall, mm -hmm. not just worrying about the Niskander Park, but the whole parcel work properly. Yeah, yeah, we found that it's uh, I think we have over 80 parking spaces, and it's adequate. Yeah. How like, large is the congregation? Hmm? May I ask how large the congregation is? Currently, we have 89 members. So on a good Sunday morning, we might have 150 or so. And some of them are going to be coming in one car. <laughs> yeah. It's not one car per person, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but the... Because uh, my concern would be that they try to avail themselves of nearby parking in this Kiuna, and I, I don't think which would be they're, problematic. They're, they're, right now, there are no plans to change any of the parking, but looking at the existing configuration, we, we had actually noted that 
with the striping, just the existing line, the, the striping could be changed to create more spaces. In addition to that, there's also uh, quite a bit of vacant land. I, I don't know what the church would have in mind, uh, what to use for that, that existing, the vacant land. But if there were ever any, any problems with parking, I think that just with the existing uh, blacktop, additional spaces could be created. Um, and then, of course, there is significant uh, additional land, which is a vacant space that, if it, if it actually became absolutely necessary to create more parking. I, I mean, from the number, the total spots being 84, and from the numbers that are being mentioned, we, we could quickly run into a parking situation here, right? That, that's my concern. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're saying about 150, what was your count there? Cars or people or? That's uh, total people, adult, and children between two services. Okay. But in terms of your membership, pretty much you almost have right now one to one between the number of members and the number of parking spots. Well, we could, we could, uh, Mr. Henry, um, you did the parking review and uh, there was, I'm trying to find it here in the, in the paper. Oh, here it is. I, I just found it. Yeah. So it's based on the uh, number of, uh, as soon as I find it. It's on page. Uh, just a... Yeah. The size, the number of uh, seats, basically, um, is, is how it works. One one space for each four seats, and at uh, Mr. Henry, uh, eighty nine spaces. Uh, uh, so it's fifty one parking spaces that were required based on the seats, and uh, eighty nine parking spaces available. So that's why I said that it seemed to be appropriate. Um, and uh, in a food pantry uh, or child care won't be running at the same time through the service, most likely. Is that a true statement? So, uh, uh, do you know what the uh, town of colony, what your uh, uh, schedule is there? At this point, we're actually just again, finalizing it, we're, the uh, contract and finalizing the plans with the builder, and then we're going to move forward. We were, if we Get, get approval here, then we would move forward. And it was our understanding that we'd be coordinating with the town of Neskiuna and the town of Colony. Okay. So uh, obviously, if we did not get approval here, yeah. we're, we're dead in the water. So we, we were really moving forward with Colony. So we know that we're actually going to be approved for the change. Of okay. Use. I got, I mean, I don't see any showstoppers personally. I don't, I'm looking at Laura because she's the expert. And uh, I mean, we could. We talked about having a resolution. I mean, I, I don't want to rush it, but it is a you know July 10th is the next meeting, so we do have time. So I mean, we could condition the resolution to include things that you know any changes in striping uh, that you submit the lighting plan when it's available, um, that uh, any changes in signage that you notify us, you know things along those lines. Uh, anything else that Laura can think of, uh, the standard conditions, you know, to make sure that uh, there's any changes that occur that, you know, that you notify us so we have an opportunity to address them, you know. I think um, my view is that um, we, we should still be able to go forward with a tentative resolution next meeting, um, work up some conditions if everybody's okay with it. Are you planning on any facade changes to the change to the exterior? No, no. not currently, no. Is the two-story house the residential property occupied my understanding that it is there is a, i think there's a family living there and we've actually reached out to the seller to see if they'd like to stay um, we were the church is okay with allowing them to stay on if they'd like to stay and then there is some acreage i don't know i would guess maybe one total acre of undeveloped land what are your intentions with that well as we discussed that right now i don't know if there's any plan yeah as of right now it's uh however we can best use it whether it's uh leave it as it is if we need additional parking that would be the go-to place for for parking uh there's already some land space that we could put uh, playground equipment or whatever the case might be on uh, near the home. Um, but uh, right now we're kind of at that point of making sure that we can buy the property and that it's going to work. Um, 
but uh, as far as what to do with it right now, kind of the, the options are there. But likely at, at some point, uh, we're moving so that we can hopefully grow. The church is 105 years old, and I kind of feel that we've kind of uh, kind of reached our, our maximum capacity as far as effectiveness, reached the community where we're currently at. So we're moving, hoping to be able to grow. Uh, and so if permitted, it would be great to be able to use that uh, as parking or expanded playground space or something down the road as, as needed. One of the reasons I ask is um, the adjacent professional office building um, was before this board to um, add some tenants to their first ground floor basement um, and parking was one of the constraints on that project. Um, so I don't think, I think they that was more preliminary. I don't think they've actually leased all of the space but but i think i think they were running into an issue with um square footage to parking spaces available so if were were the church to close and then down the road want to expand their parking would they come before the planning board again or would that just be building department no, expansion of a parking would normally come before the planning board, I think, because, um, but a lot of that open area is in the town of Colony. Some of it's in Niskuna. Yeah, some of it's in Niskuna, so it sort of depends on where they decided to make the changes. Um, we may still get a crack at it, even just because it affects our parking, but yeah. that may end up being a deferral. To but that's a good item for a condition. Yeah. Right? If you if you decide that yeah. you do want to you do grow, which you know I hope you do. And, and if you, your site is limited, you would at least notify us or come back with the changes so we'd have an opportunity to look at what's the kind of condition that we would put forth in the, the resolution. I don't think that would be a problem. All right. That was all I had. Okay. Do you currently max out the parking at your Vly Road location? No, not even close. No. Okay. That would be, that'd be a nice problem to have, not even on Christmas or, or Easter okay. currently. And we have less parking where we're currently at. I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm looking at it here in the map. It's um, looks like it's something in the order of about 60 spots tops. So it seems like this is an ideal location, you know, since it's it's fly road, it's the other end of it, but it's still, you know, reasonable location, right? For your yeah, for the community, for the congregation, it's still uh, on fly road. It's still in colony, at least on Sunday mornings in the sanctuary. Um, but yet it does get it to uh, a more traffic, more visible uh, location. Any Easy other, to find. <laughs> any other comments or thoughts? Is everybody okay again with uh, uh, at least working up a tentative resolution? We'll see uh, if there's any information in the planning department can reach out to you guys if there's anything that's lacking that they need to know in order to develop conditions for the resolution. Yeah. Does that sound reasonable, Laura? Yeah, yeah fundamentally. Okay. Like I said, it's just these issues in terms of the, the increased usage and the diversity in the usage. Yeah. Churchgoers, School children, food pantry, right? It, and it is a busy intersection. At certain times, of the day, it's a busy intersection. There's some low visibility as you're traveling um, eastward, right? Coming from the Skewness. So, I mean, those are things. I think traffic flow and signing and directing of traffic flow is, I think, going to be important for you guys. Like I said, I do drive that way a lot. And one thing I can say, there's a lot of traffic on seven and there's a lot on Rosendale Road coming up, mm -hmm. but there's not a lot going across or coming from the other direction. And that, you know, just from observation, uh, which is a positive thing, you know, um, I mean, and you want the children to be safe and they get dropped off. So, you, you know, you need to think about how, how the bus movement's going to be to make sure that, you know, if you have to like relocate parking spaces so the bus can stop and allow the children to get off safely and get into the building, that that's something to think about. Mm -hmm. We've seen that with other, uh, child care applications where they've actually showed us, you know, with the bus, the path of the, the path of the bus, and make sure everybody's safe to, to get into the building, sort of thing. You know. yeah. Just for reference, did Colony ask the same questions? No, yeah. uh, no, not yet. Okay. Probably, I assume they will, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Nothing further. Anybody? All right. We'll we'll work something up. Laura will be uh, planning office will be in contact with you, and we'll. Uh, draft a tentative resolution for the next meeting. If any surprises come up when uh, Laura is working that or Mr. Henry is working that, 
again, we'll be in touch with you and, uh, um, and we can always touch base on schedule because if there's any issues and it's going to take longer to count down a colony, but we can always we can always modify it, but we'll try to get it done for July 10th. There's I'm sorry, there's one thing I do want to add. If 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 folks and congregants are driving from Vly Road in the colony side to get to here, right? That is an undue traffic flow pressure on Valley Road also, and it's very windy, very residential, very curvy, right? So we might need to note somewhere down the line that there needs to be some kind of uh, impact of Valley Road that's... Uh... We could probably ask the engineer for like a traffic delta between just using the manual of what um, what an office In a professional office versus... To, yeah. to generate versus a church. Uh, we could just have them put that delta together for us just so we know. Yeah. yeah. Those are pulling numbers right out of the traffic engineer's handbook, you know, for the different uses. Yep. And again, I think most of the road is in the town of Colony, too, but still. Yeah. It's a 30 mile an hour road, also. Yep. But unfortunately, no. <laughs> Somehow. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. I think we're all Thank set you. for tonight. All right, if you have any questions, please reach out to the planning office, okay? <coughs> okay? Appreciate it. All right, thank you. And let's see, next is 2386 Algonquin Road, an application for a lot line adjustment. There was some, uh, I guess I call it preliminary paperwork included in the packet. It looks like there's some follow-up submittals that be had um, in order to get this application uh, moving along, um, at least at the time when the package was put together here on the, you know, at the end of last week. Um, let me see if I can try and scroll to it. I think my biggest concern was the shed. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, is we have, do we have anybody here for that or anybody Maybe online? online? Oh, Mr. Pfeiffer. Chair, Chair Walsh, uh, this is Bill, Bill Pfeiffer. Good evening. Good evening. Huh? Thank you for uh, putting me on the agenda for tonight. Yeah, we haven't seen you in some time. I remember you've been here before, right? Yes, sir. Yep. This 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 time it's on uh, a personal matter. Yeah. So the diagram or the map that you have up is is on point. Um, what appears to be a, a square is is my my residence uh, located at twenty three eighty six Algonquin. It's approximately a two hundred foot deep lot by two hundred and fifteen feet across. But you can see the the back rear corner has an overlay uh, from Gary Horton's lot, which is a keyhole lot off of Troy Road. Um, what we're thinking about doing is there's a triangle in the middle of that diagram that's uh, the long side is uh, about 119 feet. And the two sides comprising what's close to being a right angle are, are 107 and 63 feet. It's shaded. It's about 0 0.08 acres. Um, and it's entirely wooded. The idea is to keep it wooded. And um, if you look at the corner of that triangle that's closest to my house, what appears to be a right angle. That's about 30, maybe 35 feet off of my house. It's, it's fairly close. So if, if, if Gary Horton were to clear those trees and erect a fence on the perimeter of his, his uh, property line, um, it would be right on top of my house. So I've been here since 2008, uh, 2006, actually. Um, Gary's been here longer. We both enjoy the woods. We both enjoy the buffer. And uh, we've talked about this a couple of times. And uh, more recently, we've come to a handshake where if this were approved, um, I would buy that, that triangle from Gary. Now, in, in drawing the triangle, we've come up with various proposals on the side that would be currently marked as 63.34 feet. 
the one that makes the most sense to both of us uh, places that triangle so that it's about five feet off of Gary's shed, which would make it a non-conforming shed, even though it's been there for at least 30 years. So what I'm hoping to do is to appear before you tonight, um, have my application denied and sent to the zoning board seeking a variance. And then if they grant me a variance, come back to you uh, with that variance and uh, seeking the lot line adjustment. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pfeiffer. Um, obviously the, uh, in the packet, you know, there's uh, uh, the authorization for the lot line adjustment and all, and all the paperwork. Is that something that has to be done after the ZBA, Laura? Um, no, we can actually deny it. I was speaking with Linda today. Um, he actually submitted a full signature on the lot line application. So we can actually just deny the lot line application um, as of today. And um, from there, you guys would have to make a recommendation to the zoning board. Um, if we were able to get him on to the July meeting, which I think we can, yep. you would uh, want to be prepared to make a recommendation on the July 10th meeting. Correct. Yep. Uh, July 19th is the zoning board of appeals meeting, the next meeting. Yep. Can you hear me okay, Mr. Pfeiffer? I, I, I can hear you. So, so, uh, and I note, made note of, of July 10th. So if the zoning board is not meeting before the 10th, uh, a, a, a vote tonight would be moot if we could do it on this, on the 10th. Right. Well, the, uh, the agenda is already set for the next zoning board of appeals, which is, uh, next week, I think, or something like that. Right. So yeah, it's, we too be, yeah, June meeting, so. it's too late for the okay, June meeting. So Okay. It's too late for June. So we'll, we'll so my, the only questions, I, I just have a couple of questions looking at, uh, you know, one of the things, and I, you know, I know you're familiar with us, is that we always look to keep um, any lots, uh, you know, rectangular, you know, nice geometries for all lots. I think that's also in our comprehensive plan and in our guidelines. And uh, uh, the uh, existing lot of Mr. Horton, you know, I guess even though it's a keyhole lot, you know, it's pretty rectangular based. Uh, you, obviously, your lot is uh, kind of skewed having, you know, his, you know, kind of injected into yours, right? But when you, after you do this lot line adjustment, what you've done is created two uh, lots that aren't regular shaped versus the one yours, okay? Um, so I just, you know, so that's one comment. So one of the, did you talk to Mr. Horton about other options about, um, you know, like uh, for your lot, instead of just taking the 0 .087, you know, coming straight down on the, um, the one side there and, and actually have the shed on your property and take ownership of the shed? Did, did you have I, When, when uh, my survey person came, she did pre uh, prepare multiple options. And, and one of the other options was extending the side of the triangle more than 63.3 feet. So that way the, the line uh, would, would give me ownership of, of the shed. And um, uh, Gary chose to, to do it this way um gary is is uh currently facing some some medical issues and uh me me buying the portion from him would would uh, be favorable to gary and he feels that it does not uh impact the value of, of his property in, in in any way and he's comfortable doing this um and the shed can't be moved that is correct one thing that, that would be helpful, Mr. Pfeiffer, before our next meeting, uh, I, I didn't see any pictures of the shed to see what you know condition is, what it, what it looks like. Um, is that something we could have uh, sent into the planning office so we could take a look at that? I could go back with, with my iPhone and take some pictures and email them to, to Clark, yes. Yeah, I'd like to see, the, is it in good condition? Or? Uh, it, it, Quite frankly, uh, Mr. Walsh, it, it, it's an older shed. Um, it's it's Gary's shed is probably a small one car garage, very small. I don't think a car, a, a lawn tractor would fit in it, but it, it has a uh, an arch roof and, and it has a, a rolling overhead garage door for, for, for entrance. I, I, I don't know if it's a dirt floor or a cement floor, but it's it's affixed to the ground with, with, with footings um and, and and therefore moving it would be impracticable okay it's, yeah. it's definitely more than 120 square feet 
That is correct. Yeah, it'd be great to have, and I didn't see the dimensions, some dimensions and a picture of it would be, would, would be good to have in order to help us to make our recommendation. Obviously, the Zoning Board of Appeals, you know, is the uh, the right agency to make the determination. We're just making a uh, recommendation to them, but it helps uh, and it helps you because any questions that we have, most likely they'll also have. So, so Mr. Walsh, in, in regard to your comment about square lots, um, Cindy Elliott, my survey person, made the comment that this adjustment would conform both lots to something that was uh, closer to a, a square. This is, again, a back corner of Gary's lot, kind of behind his shed that's completely wooded to remain wooded. My, my, my real big fear is, again, that somebody clears the woods and puts a fence up that would be about, you know, 20, 30 feet off of my back porch and instead of sitting on my back porch drinking coffee, I, I would be looking at somebody's fence instead of looking into a nice, and, and the woods, it's it's not a, a manicured, um, it, it's it's sort of uh, the, the way that, that any of the nature preserves would be. Um, down, uh, if you're facing the front of my house at the end of Algonquin Road, if you're familiar with that, all of that is 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 all naturally and, and just naturally grown woods that uh, we like and, and would want to preserve as much of that as possible. Okay. And I, and I understand that and that, uh, that's important to me also. So I'm, I'm good with that. And again, it's just a, a recommendation to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, and you know, they're the, they're the agency that makes the, the ultimate decision. Uh, one thing that's positive here, I mean, it's, it's a unique situation. You're both in agreement. Um, and, and the goal is, you know, um, it does intrude, you know, his lot into yours. I can see that your point, and it'd be nice to have that uh, safety factor for the future. So, you know, I would like that personally too. So, <laughs> would there be a recommendation if we recommend approval that when, when the shed needs to be replaced, it be placed further off the lot line? I. I the zoning board can add conditions um, as they see fit to a resolution, but that isn't a typical condition that we see. Yeah, yeah because if they decide but to... Could, could it be a recommendation from us to them that they add it? You could put that in your recommendation yeah. if you all vote for it. They don't have to yeah. vote for it, but... Yeah. I mean, if, if the uh, Mr. Horton were ever to build another shed, he would have to get a building permit and would have to follow all setbacks, or otherwise the new one would be in front of the zoning board of appeals, so... That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So the, if it would be to expand a front notice shed in any way, it would go back to the zoning board. Correct. Of yes. To look at anyway. So to me, it's uh, just important, I think, just to um, uh, see what the shed looks like. Um, I think you have a situation here where the neighbors are in agreement you know, and it appears to benefit both neighbors. Um, I know where I stand. Uh, like I'd not like to see a picture of the shed, but it's a recommendation. and. We can take that up at our uh, yeah, but, July 10th meeting, right? Yeah, I mean, we do need to consider, obviously, the future of the lots, right? Not just the current neighbors. Th there's a little structure you have on your property right next to the 63.34 foot leg of that triangle. What is that? Shed. That's, another That's shed. a shed. So again, not it's not going to get moved or anything. I mean, right now it's it's awfully close to the property line that's existing, yeah. right? Up, you know how big your my 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 shed is a 14 feet across and six inches deep six inches six feet deep excuse me uh the the front side of it is is open um again my my house uh, we moved here in 06 the house was built in 1954 by the heath family we're the second owners so i, I I'm, I'm sure that shed was built by jack heath 40, 50 years ago, and, and, and that shows as well. Um, my, my shed is not long for the world. It, it, when it comes down, it, it's gone. Uh, Gary's shed is, is, is more is, is old, but it's, it's a much better shed than my own. Okay. So, 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 and so right now, Mr. Piper's shed is actually non-conforming too. Yeah, it's pre-existing right? non-conforming, and this yep. lot line would make it conforming. Actually, yep, it'll make it yeah. Conforming. Okay. So, so again, Mr. Mike, we're just, and I mean, you know, you've heard it several times, you have to make a recommendation. One of the things we wrestle with is, you know, 
suitability views impact in a comp plan. At, at the highest level, what's your motivation for doing this lot line adjustment? I mean, is it just that you want to preserve that area to be wooded forever, and so therefore you want to be in ownership of it, or is it something else? That 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 is that is correct. Um, and, and if, if you look at um, the uh, lands of Desiderio, uh, is we share a driveway, and and so there, there's no buffer there. But lands of of Gillette, that back corner is is wooded. Um, lands of Maloney off to the, the left is Cayuga Court. That that area, the, the back corner of, of Gary's lot and the back corner of Gillette's lot, the back corner of Maloney, all of these lots are are wooded, which is is something that's that's common on Algonquin and, and Cayuga that uh, when you have houses that would otherwise their, their yards would look into each other. There, there tends to be a woods. And, and, and my objective is to uh, keep as, as much of that as, as possible. Uh, when I first moved in, uh, a, a tall tree fell in this area that we're talking about. And I asked Gary, Gary, you know, are you, are you gonna chop it up and take it away? And he's like, no, nope, gonna, you know, let it, let it go. And, and, um, uh, after the longer I'm here, the, the more I agree with Gary that uh, it, it, it's grown, it, it's natural. We don't take anything out. We don't uh, put new 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 plants in. Uh, you know, we might cut it back a little bit so it, so it doesn't you know overgrow into our lawn. But um, it, it, it's it, it looks like uh, any other part of the Lysha kill. Okay. And and also. The, you could from from where we're we're talking if you were to stand on a, the end of algonquin road which dead ends you wouldn't see any of this uh desiderio and gillette wouldn't see any of this uh the people from uh troy road wouldn't see any of this 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 triangular area is is visible only by the people that myself and gary Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pfeiffer. You're um, welcome. Um, all right. Is there any other questions or concerns? I think we uh, we should have at least a recommendation to the Zoning Board of Appeals at our July 10th meeting. Um, for, uh, uh, for So Mr. Pfeiffer can be on July 19th Zoning Board, Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Um, I just request uh, you know you send some pictures into the planning office that they can get distributed to the planning board. Yep. Just understand one thing a little bit better. So this applicant proposes a lot line adjustment that creates the non-conformance on another individual's property. Who's actually in front of the zoning board? I mean, I guess it's this applicant, but. So actually both property owners have to sign the application. Right, okay. Yeah. So they're so, essentially both before the zoning board. Right, yep, okay. But if, yep. if Mr. Pfeiffer is the only one that's gonna be in attendance, he could have a letter that says he's representing the other applicant, right? Mm -hmm. Well, they've both already signed the application. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, we got the signed papers today. But, but the transfer hasn't occurred, right? No, I no. can't without can't. the yeah. flat and the chairman's approval. All right. I mean, I mean, we ask that we don't need to belabor it, but, you know, it, Mr. Piper's property does can become almost exactly a square, but he said it's one of the options that Mr. Horton did not Correct. consider. It wasn't interested in. What yeah, I, heard. I don't know if we want to or want to probe that more. Or we could just let it go. But gosh, it looks like <laughs> you know we're taking a property that used to look like Pac-Man and making it look a little less like Pac-Man, but still like Pac-Man, square Pac-Man. When the opportunity sits there to make at least his property completely square. Well, it sounds like Mr. Horton want to keep the garage, right? Because if you straighten the line out, he loses the uh, shed or garage, whatever you would like to call it, right, Mr. Pfeiffer? That, that that's correct. Again, I, I I did have have two professional drawings made. I gave uh, Gary the choice, and and this is this is what he chose. Okay. So we have we have two adults come to an agreement, and but for. Uh, the, the the shed that would be impractical to move um 
this would be a lot simpler. It would also be impractical given that it's likely oriented facing Troy Schenectady Road for you to use that shed mm -hmm. in its current configuration in, in, in order for me to, to to get to gary's shed i would have to clear a significant amount of, of uh, 50 foot trees a lot of huckleberry and um i, I would also yeah. have to, to, to trudge up but i'd have to leave my house go down a hill and then trudge back up the hill to get to his shed and the current the current door doorway to his shed faces the word boundary that's in front of it. It doesn't face my property or the downhill area. So Thank you. would probably be destroying some wildlife habitat. All right, any, any further discussions or questions? All right, we'll make a recommendation at our July 10th meeting, Mr. Pfeiffer. And if you get the picture. Thank you for your time, everybody. Much right. appreciated. I appreciate you. Uh, Thank you. All right, I'll move on to reports and let's see. Um, I think we'll start with the uh, benchmarking update. Um, this is the uh, deadline that uh, we've been discussing and the planning office has been working on for submittals for our meetings. Is that Mr. Henry, do you want to speak about that? Yes. Sure, we just wanted to give a quick update. We've looked at the town of Clifton Park, Glenville, Half Moon and Bethlehem. And we put a couple of slides together that we'll share with everyone at the next planning board meeting. So it's been, it's been an interesting little benchmarking exercise to look at um, their deadlines for re receiving applicants' materials relative to the planning board meeting. So we just wanted to let everyone know that we did look into that and we want to get the information out to you in your packets uh, prior to the meeting. So we'll put it on the agenda for the July uh, planning board meeting. And then Laura and I will recommend um, we have to kind of look at it and recommend what we would like to do going forward. So we just wanted to give a quick update on that. Thank you. Okay, and under reports, I think, uh, Laura, would you like to discuss uh, the current Airbnb status in the town of this county? Yeah, so currently um, the town doesn't have a timeline for rentals. Um, we don't distinguish between short-term and long-term. So if a single family home is being rented, in the town of this unit, it can be rented for a day or it can be rented for 15 years. Um, um, so what the town of this unit does not allow is renting a piece of the home because then it becomes two unrelated people living under a single roof, which is not allowed under our code. But if the whole house is rented to a, you know, other entity um, that's not a violation of town code. We have, I think, twice looked at Airbnb regulations um, during our zoning code updates. Uh, both times, I think we haven't enacted them. Other codes have come to the surface. They are, I think, a little burdensome um, in that a couple of them when we looked at, I know Lake Placid, Lake Placid has a concern because people are actually like almost predatorily purchasing single family homes and the concentration of the single family homes, I think was concerning to Lake Placid. But, um, and I, I know Leslie, you, you read them a lot. I don't remember them off the top of my head, but my recollect, my recollection of what we reviewed, it was more of a regulatory kind of money collecting exercise in which, in which we would, review the um, Airbnbs in terms of like building inspection and that type of thing, like similar to what Saratoga does, and then sort of annually license them. I do not recall any type of like barrier to them going in. In my memory of the regulations that we've looked at, it's just been more of a regulation of building safety and revenue. Right. Yeah, and building oh. safety, like also like uh, trash, making sure trash cans are, yeah. are kept orally, that, you know, not parking control, and make sure there's enough parking spaces in the driveway versus parking in the neighborhood. When there's a long those lines, but we don't have any of that in place right now. We that's, do not. That's just something that we've been looking at. We have at. looked at it. And we had a couple of drafts. Well, we looked at several different Airbnb uh, regulations in different towns and villages in the past, but we haven't taken any action yet. I did take a training on it last year. And I think it was the Lake Plaza one that I really liked. 
because amongst other things, it limited the amount of time total that any one home could be leased out so that its primary usage remained residential, not rental. Yeah. Because long-term rentals are long-term rentals. Right, and neither long but, but then they establish, I mean, I've had neighbors who've been renting for, what, six, seven years already. I mean. like, and they're, they're my neighbors. They're neighbors. Not a problem. But when you have the short-term rentals, they're really not neighbors. They're there for maybe a weekend, maybe a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. And the house starts to lose its residential quality. And I understand what the lady we spoke at the privilege of the floor was concerned about. I, I have the same concern. So I I would be willing to look at this sort of thing again. Yeah. Don't know how the town board feels about it. If they have no interest in doing it, then we would just be spinning our wheels. But I think it makes sense. Um, well, the codes that we looked at before is essentially if you were going to conduct a short-term rental, you would have to take out a building permit with the town of Nisp unit and, the, you know, that's and be like yeah. registered and yeah. licensed every year. So in terms of policing, we are a complaint driven office. Um, I mean, we don't like we because we talked about it when we were looking at the other code. Like you can't write in Airbnb, you can't write in Verbo, like because these platforms they grow and they change. So as far as like you know, hiring a staff person to be going through all these sites and seeing what's listed for NISCI unit, no. Mm -hmm. Typically complaint driven. And yeah. I think the last time we looked at it, we hadn't gotten a complaint on Airbnb in like two or three years. Um, so this is the first complaint that we've gotten in right. a couple years. But with the absence of all that, I mean, this complaint isn't the, the style that the resident at the Prisoner of Four was making. It sounds more like a police complaint than a uh, well, Enough. yes, I have mentioned to her that if the party seemed to be rowdy or too late, that that's yeah. a police call. But I don't believe that that's necessarily the issue. I think it's just the change in the number of people. Right. But we require people who run businesses from their homes to register those businesses. And to me, this is the same thing. You're using your home as a part-time business. Yeah, I know. We. I mean, we've definitely. And I think it needs to be. I really do think it should be looked at again, but. Yeah, I mean, and you also have the concept, too, that someone could strictly buy a home in a residential area strictly to run that business. Not, not even be a resident, right? Or yeah. recently. Oh, a, yeah. And I mean, I haven't looked at the map, but I think yeah. the last time we looked at the map, there were like two homes in all of the town of Nisp, you know, that were Airbnbs. It may be more now. It, it's definitely increased. It's definitely increased. Yeah. So you yeah. see the map, you mean you go to like uh, Airbnb, Airbnb, you say search on Nisp, you know, Yeah, and there and was like many two circles because they don't give you the actual address, mm -hmm. but they used to just kind of circle the general yeah. area. And there's more vendors doing it, I believe. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the last time we looked at it, I think generally speaking, it wasn't a problem, but it may be a rising issue. Yeah. And, 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 and as you stated, they can just go ahead and do it. There's no formality right now. They don't have to notify that it's a short-term rental, that they don't have to do anything. They just, Correct. They, they just can't they just do it. a room. Yeah. But if they're listing their whole house, it's really yep. it's not an issue. Well, is this something a uh, house for any renter. I know we've talked about in the past and just it wasn't a priority um, based on the limited number, but is this something the Comprehensive Plan Committee has on their screen also about recommendation? Sounds like it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. So. We can put it in. Yeah. But yeah. So, that so might I'm take curious, a while. What, what do we think the market drivers are? I mean, I thought when we were looking at the, the regulations, I thought it seemed like there was a lot of structure for low likelihood. But if this is an incident and there's more happening. What's motivating it? Would you know, Chris, by chance? Well, as from a real estate agent perspective, yeah. there's been an increased opportunity for income in certain areas and investors are taking advantage of that. I get that. What's what's motivating someone to actually take a leasehold, to take use and occupancy? It's probably, it's not a lease, right? Only, only thing available. To do what? To rent. So like they may not find a rental, an Airbnb investor might create an Airbnb short term that creates a market for potential rental, whereas there are none typically. Or not as easy. But these are short-term duration we're thinking. Not necessarily. No. You know, there, there, there's been a lot of targeting of smaller square footage homes, one, two bedrooms, or converting a three bedroom to a one, two bedroom as an Airbnb. 
so that and sometimes it's short term and sometimes it's acceptable for the intention <coughs> to make it longer term which that depletes the supply of, of starter homes and yeah, markets yeah, yeah. like this yeah. so, so this is maybe a, a point without any outcome but please pull the microphone forward so the, <coughs> so the question is right if if it's a short-term duration if it's if it's, if it's hoteling it's not a leasehold it's a use and occupancy right you're, you're not you don't get the rights and benefits of a tenant if you're short term, but if you're longer duration, does Airbnb and VRBO do they offer leaseholds, right? So there's a, there's enhanced protections, right? It's a yeah. different status. I don't know. I don't know what. I, right. I think that Air, I mean Airbnb is putting regulations around that, and they're policing their applicants a little bit more, and sometimes they're failing them on their application, and they're not prepared to 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 do a short term rental under Airbnb, <clears throat> but to the population, there's an increased trust in using Airbnb as the mechanism to rent. For longer duration. Whatever. If someone, like for example, if you were gonna book a, a home or a, a place to stay in the Poconos <clears throat> and it's under Airbnb, the family, you yourself as a, as a user might feel comfortable doing that. As soon as that person isn't approved by Airbnb, they're not likely to rent, even though that was exactly the way it was always done before. You just rented from someone who owned a home. So the, the, the concept of trust has changed a little bit in the, in the consumer population, in my opinion. My, my only question is, is it a platform now to use for year leases? Do you I, have any I, can't, I can't answer that. Okay. I, don't, okay. I don't think it is, but I don't okay. know. Well, the other question is uh, regarding, I guess, the need you know, why disc Una? Okay. Yeah. So if somebody's coming what's the and they, they want to have a, a weekend or a week or a month, whatever, what's the driver? Is it, you know, Union College because their kid's going to school or is it because of uh, the location near the airport? I mean, so there's got to be some reason why what's um, the some towns or villages are more uh, likely to have successful Airbnbs. And I think Miss Una maybe, you know, just, I, I don't know. Yeah. My opinion on that is a lack of inventory. Okay, so in that good school district. So and do we know for sure the property that the resident referred to Laura because I think she said she talked to you? Is that an Airbnb? Because um, I'm looking here in the Airbnb site and I don't see something in Ruffin Road. I could I mean I'm not a did you pick a date? Like I a, mean we sometimes just call things Airbnb, but there's a variety of different yeah. sites. Okay. Like whether it's hosted on an on the actual Airbnb site or the Virgo or, you yeah. know, where. And, and there's no documenting of that that's required by residents to say what kind of a rental business they're running in their home. We do. We have not regulated rental yeah. contracts in the town of Nisbe. You know, we do not. Yeah, yeah, just making sure. Yeah, you, you're seeing you're seeing none, Mr. Cohn? Nothing on Ruffin Road. Well, maybe oh, there is one. Maybe there is one on Ruffin Road, actually. I take that back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I think it, it's coming up, but I think yeah. maybe there is one for it. Okay. Interesting. Do you actually have an address, Mr. Scrubbytons? No, I think they, they I, don't. I think they don't. Actual address they don't yeah, they don't actually yeah no, there's. Wow. There is. There's several. There's a rough number. Right showing one. Right there. Showing one. That's probably per night. I would imagine that fee is the $400. The $400. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How am I see you? $400 bucks per night. Wow, um, I, I, but I'm mystified like you. Like I just, you know, when I, what, what's yeah. the why? You, you can understand Saratoga. Saratoga. Yeah, right. You can, you know, you can understand Albany. You know, uh, yeah, um, lots of places. But uh, I guess it's a good, safe location. So maybe that's what's desirable. So it's, it is close <coughs> to the airport. I mean, if you're, uh, yeah, yeah I mean, it's like the point about going to school district. I think you need to have a long term right to be able to register your child in the school. <laughs> and I don't think we'd be able to do that with a short term rental, right? unless the school school doesn't know, you know. Well, they got his an address, and here's where I'm living, right? Um, okay. Yeah. So I guess the only actionable thing we can do is consider whether we want to relook at that code. relook at the code again, right? Probably seems like the right thing to do, right? Or at least uh, let the comprehensive plan committee make a recommendation, since that's an active mm -hmm. committee, and <laughs> I'm sure he's trying to get things done uh, this year because it's uh, at least yeah. recommendations done this year. You know? I think it's going to be next year before it's finalized. Oh, no, before, well, the conference plan or the Airbnb? The conference plan. The conference plan. The conference plan. Yeah. 
<clears throat> yeah, I would expect the Airbnb wouldn't be able to get anything done this year. Um, yeah. we'll start, you know, at least mm -hmm. had quite a bit of. Look at, I mean, we could look at the last code that we had yeah. reviewed. Does Bethlehem? It seems like Bethlehem seems to be the go-to. Do they have one down? There? I have not looked at Bethlehem. That might be worthwhile there to see what they got. They seem like they. It's a similar neighborhood, similar yeah. town. Yeah, I, I think the town is just subject to a localized amount of time where maybe close to U Albany graduation or Union College graduation, families might have come in for a quick period. If a house is renting for $400 a night, that's relatively cheap to get a house for a day. And if it turns into a frequent thing where users are coming to use it as a party house or to get away for a weekend or something like that, that's not a lot of money to split between several people, especially if they're several cars that are filling up driveways, parking on the streets, which you can park on the street overnight now. So I think maybe it's just a, something that the you know, planning department keeps their eye on. If there's continual mm -hmm. complaints, then, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. once a listing gets too many complaints, that's going to be, it's going to be, it's pretty heavily policed. Yeah. Well, the other, uh, the other alternative is when we looked at these, uh, I guess they call them uh, extensive uh, uh, potential codes for, you know, uh, short-term rentals. Maybe maybe we do something that's you know um, simple. It just says that they need to register, and uh, there's certain guidelines to follow, like you know you know, you know keep the trash, you know park in the driveway, and um, you know obey uh, the noise ordinance, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, just just so something to get started, and that way at least the town would know where they are, and it would collect the fee for them to at least register, or maybe maybe or something. Yeah. I'm not an expert, though, but I think once you start sort of inserting yourself between like the landlord tenant yeah. contract, you have to do a building inspection would be my guess. Yeah. Because like you can't register and then say, yeah, we're taking your money, but whatever's inside your house is fine. Like, I think you have to, right. you, your building inspector has to go in and check. Check that smoke detectors. Smoke detectors. And and access, yeah. Exits and that, yeah, becomes, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I'm not a hundred percent sure about that, but it'd be my guess. Like once you do a registration, I think you're going to have to do a full building safety inspection, probably like annually. Mm. Yeah. But that's not necessarily bad. It's not and necessarily it, bad, but I think you have to define it. It can be burdensome on the inspectors. I know. Yeah, and you may Listen, have to. But, I mean. <laughs> but there's also a benefit to the property owner in that they've got the documentation that things were in order. And if the renter <laughs> leaves things otherwise, they've got documentation and they got a way of going. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an extra like layer of government that we don't have in the town of Niski unit yet. Like it's def it would definitely be like, you know, registration, you've got to pay, the building inspector's got to go in, even if you're going to do it very mildly. Um, it definitely, like, I mean, that's when, that's why we've looked at it before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and I think at the time it was like, Okay, well, if we're adopting chicken code, that's going to be registration, annual inspections, building inspections, nuisance complaints. Like, yeah. we, we are continually adding, you know, jobs and duties <laughs> yeah. to the town. It's just a balance, you know. And obviously, we should pass the fees, you know, on to the owner, too, for those yeah, inspections. Yeah, I mean, you, you can pass the fees on. I mean, yeah. and, like, we're looking at, you know, potentially expanding the building department a little ah. bit. So, mm. but, you know, I think that that's where the balance lies. If you're going to adopt kind of an onerous code, like, it's just. You know, one thing to think about this is get behind the economics. Like, it, it, I find it hard to believe that you would get that much rental volume to cover the cost. I mean, in my estimation, the economics are in favor of, it, of just flipping the property, selling it. So something else is going on. I bet you that's unique and particular to this property. You know, are there overdue taxes? Is there a foreclosure? I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't stand to reason given this market that somebody is covering their nut on an occasional $400 rental and it's going to be variable, right? It's not a consistent. Yeah. Something's upside down. And I think it's, yeah. it's behind it's inside the economics here, which we can't really crack. Be curious to see: is there is there a lien? Is there municipal? I mean, those are all public records. We could pull. We could figure that out. I mean, they're literally advertising Wi-Fi speed and remote work on the Airbnb site for what, this what property. The Wi-Fi speed and remote work, ideal for remote work. That's the main 
selling points that pop to the so top. Like somebody's coming from out of town to do a you know six month job and they need to be in the area. Or, or according to the resident, a six day job. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Yep. That's very there's definitely there's again it's a shift in in mindset. People who travel and work remotely occasionally are looking at Airbnb. So if you go into Schenectady, I'll check that versus a hotel. Yep. And that's why they go. And they may also look into, you know, well, what's this neighborhood versus that neighborhood? And, and this you know, may stand out for one reason or another. Mature growth, big trees, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. But I, I think there's more than we are aware of. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. and if they're not visible on the app, they're in the works. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I think this Kiuna's kind of no hotel policy would tend to drive this, right? The what was the tech? I mean, we don't we, we don't, don't have, have hotels hotel. in the town, right? Yeah, it's no we policy don't. on not having them. Just so we so, don't have yeah, them. we don't have a hotel. Yeah, you, well. you're just allowed to rent. You can't yeah. split your home, but you can you can rent your home. And do we require uh, rental certificates for those long term? No, we do not. Yeah. So there is no inspection within our town. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. We just um, regard single family homes to have, you know, what there's. Yeah, single family. Mm. They can't be. They can't be multi-family residences. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. So you see, it's going to take some time to resolve. It's mm -hmm. it's not not as simple as we'd like it to be. Sure. You just need to come up so we get you on the on the. Uh, <coughs> person it feels unsafe and all oh, the neighbors are upset and they were like there it was go to the town go to the town so that's why i'm here because everyone yeah. told me to come to the town is it legal i'm like i don't know if it's it legal. is legal. that sounds like it's, it's legal. legal it is legal, legal. Yeah. and like just and like as a point of clarification even if we adopted the code the code is probably not going to say that that can't happen right yeah, yeah. yeah. So just like as a, as a Resident, I bought a house to be a residential area. I didn't buy a house to live next to a hotel. And I think your questions are excellent about like what's driving it. I, I don't really know. I, I, you know, I if there's trouble, I'm not the first to call the police. They're on the property, they drink a little, that's okay. You know, some of them are kind of a little wild, and some of them are probably graduations or weddings, or but it, it's it's very disheartening to me because I I didn't move to this area to be next to people I don't know. And I said to the young woman too, I said, you know who's coming in? Are you screening them? And she said, no, I don't believe that. And so there's different license plates. So sometimes I'll take a you know a picture just because I don't want to be robbed. And I'm I'm a New Yorker. So my mind is kind of that that mindset. But if it's legal then I want to help her, you know, keep it safe. But it just changes the nature of the street. And a lot of people are upset. Uh, a lot of people said to me, if that happened, my wife would be living. I tend to be a little more calm, but I am upset. I put up cameras. If I want to put up trees, that's 10,000. I. It's just, it's it's tough. You know, it's not like Cape Cod. You know, like you rent a place and you know the owners next door. You don't know who these people are. So I... I feel like neighbors should know. I think in September, if people are renting the house, little children shouldn't shouldn't be on a bus stop without adult supervision. That's just me caring for kids. As far as me, my you know, I'm not I'm not as happy anymore. Like if you listen to some of the people speaking, they were you know they want to keep trees in their backyard. They want to have a fence. You know, that's nice. That's nice because they know their neighbors. I don't I don't know my neighbors anymore. Um, I don't know why they don't use a hotel, but I get it because Airbnb is popular. But if you look at the literature, they are bringing down neighborhoods. They're uh, bringing down property values, and um, some countries actually say, "Please don't rent Airbnb. Use our hotels." I, you know, I don't know what to say. There's nothing I could say. It's legal. I'll deal with it. But it's sad because I think I said to Laura, if you had a choice. To live next to you know Kevin Walsh and his family, or you know this house that's rented out every. I mean, the last people there were there five nights. Last week it was three nights. The last week it was. It's just constant. Cars coming and going, and it's anxiety for them because are they really supposed to be there? Does the owner check? 
did they stay an extra day? What are they doing? You know, I don't know. Yeah, I can understand your concerns. Um, anyway, I'm going to try to help them as long as it's legal, but I, I do think that it's wrong for people to buy a house dead in the center of a residential area and start renting it, you know, short-term rentals. And um, so neighbors ask me to come. I'll tell them it's legal. Yep. And we'll just keep an eye. And, and again, you can tell them we've talked about it before. It's on our screen. It wasn't a priority, but... Uh, you know, with the comp plan committee, it's it's on our screen, and we'll, it's going to take it's going to take it's going to take some time. Yeah, okay. And it seems like the information is available on the Airbnb. You could even check uh, attendance dates and all that stuff. So, Airbnb. That's what I looked at, but I don't know if it's the same property. But it looks like it could be. Someone sent it to me. The neighbors all knew. I didn't know. So. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck. And have a lovely weekend. Thank all right. you. I think you are. Appreciate that. All right, Commission Business, anybody have any questions uh, or comments? Oh, I got one thing, and I thank Mr. Henry for, for texting me. I did forget. Uh, on 20, 1222 Troy Road and on 2386 Algonquin, I'd like to have some project leads for each of those uh, for our next meeting uh, for the uh, Troy Road, um, obviously the, the church, and for Algonquin, just to make her you know, help with the recommendation to the Zoning Board of Appeals. So if you don't know tonight, I'll send out an email to everybody. You can let, let me know on the phone planning office. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Henry. Any other questions for Laura or Clark? Or the attorney? Any questions for anybody? No? I just wanted to mention I uh, will be unable to attend the next meeting in July. Okay. Be away with my family. Thank you. All right. Uh, I've got a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by uh, Ms. Gold. I have a second? Second. Second. Okay. I'm going to assume we're all in favor of German. Uh, have, a <laughs> <laughs> <Aye. Aye. laughs> have a good night and thank you, everybody. <laughs> yeah. A little longer than we thought. <laughs> exactly. How you been? Okay.